as we came in to see the new cars for 2022, everyone was going to say, these cars are all look the same. But in fact, we've ended up with 10 distinctly different cars. And nowhere on the car is more different than the side pods. So the question is, why are the side pods different this year? And what does a side pod do anyway? Because barge boards have been banned, the side pods have allowed to be moved further forwards within a regulatory box. And this means that the side pod is now taking on some of the barge board's functions. Equally, the side pods have been allowed to have louvers to allow the hot air come out from the radiators, which is the first time they've been allowed to do that since 2008. So what is the primary function of a side pod? Well, it's to house these, the radiators for the car. And you will need to then have ducting to bring air to the radiator and then to get the hot air out of the back of the car as well. And you need to do that as efficiently as possible to reduce drag, but also to make sure you get the maximum cooling. So this is one of just many radiators in the car. In fact, this is about half of the water cooling for the V6 engine on one of the current hybrid engines. You've also got oil, you've got oil and water for the hybrid system, plus the gearbox, hydraulics, and the turbo intercooler. So there's lots of that to fit inside the side pods and some of it along the center line of the car as well. Then after that, there's two other mechanical functions for the side pod. One is very important for safety, which is these. These are the side impact structures or SIS, SISs, as the teams tend to call them. These are carbon fiber crash structures that extend out the side of the car to protect the driver in the event of them having a side impact with barriers or other cars. Uh, these are carbon fiber, as I say, there's two on each side. One just up by the driver's elbow on the outside of the car and another one much lower down on the uh, floor area of the car. Now remember these because these are going to come back when we talk about the Mercedes. The other function that you have with um, side pods is to house electronics. Now this year a lot of the teams have actually put a lot of electronics inside the cockpit and underneath the front of the chassis. So there's much less inside the side pods, but still some of it has to sit there like the lap time triggers which beam out to the side of the track. And then you have the aerodynamic function of the side pods. Now this is a many fold. So you've got to look after the front tire wake. You've also got to look after the rear tires and manage the airflow between them. And then you've got how the side pods can affect the airflow around the floor, load in the front of the floor or at the back of the diffuser. So we're going to take a look through some of the cars. I'd love to look through all of them. We simply don't have time to look at every side pod. We would be here all day. But let's just start to have a look through and see what teams have done differently between themselves on these cars. So we will start off with the Red Bull, which in some respects is the most conventional of the uh, cars that we'll look at. So first of all, what you'll see here is just the general shape of the side pod. And just notice where the front wheel sits and where the rear wheel sits relative to the side pod. If we just play this along, we can start to see some of the unique aspects of the Red Bull. One of the key changes on the Red Bull that you saw is this front end area here you have this, what I describe as the beak, this little section here, which just brings the side pod inlet forwards. The actual side pod inlet is tucked in under here. And this is important when we come to the next clip, because you'll see that you've got this big area here created as an undercut to manage some of the airflow around the car. But what you also notice is that you've got this big wide area where you have the sponsor decal here, which helps keep the airflow, the wake from the front tire away from the back of the car. And this really helps reduce drag because when that front tire wake goes around the back of the car and if it hits the diffuser or the rear wing, it upsets their performance. So it really has a big impact on how the car works. We now have a look at the Red Bull a little bit closer. We can actually see a bit more. Again, look at where the front and rear wheels are relative. Now inside here, we've got the radiators which sit somewhere like this inside the car. Uh, you can see the back of the radiator goes all the way down to the floor. And we were talking about side impact structures, this little bump here, that is where the lower one is and then the upper one is up above here. But now let's start to have a look at the airflow around. So you have this big area here which helps create pressure at the side of the side pod to keep the front tire wake away. But now we come to look at this undercut area here. And what you have is airflow can go into the undercut and reach this edge of the floor and flick back up. Meanwhile, airflow under the floor with, directed by the, these fences comes up as well. And this allows you to create a lot of downforce at the very front of the car. It is good because it gives you a front to rear balance of downforce, which means that you're not too um, fixed on one end of the car or the other. The other feature of the Red Bull, and it's something that Red Bull have been doing for many years, is this sloped, this downwash side pod. 
So again, what you can see here is airflow comes over the top, goes all the way down the surface of the side pod to the diffuser and this year with the beam wing. And this means that the airflow hits the diffuser and beam wing makes them work much more efficiently. This is creating lots of downforce at the back of the car. So when you start to summarize this, you can see that generally the Red Bull mixes uh, low drag because of its shape around the front and the rear tires. And also it balances the downforce front and rear because of the shape of the car. Now other teams are doing something different and we'll have a look at the Ferrari, which is distinctly different. So here we have the Ferrari and we'll just let the video just run around here. Now you can see straight away front wheel, large flank to the side pod, this big area. And we'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail uh, in a moment. But then as the car comes around, we start to see the side pod inlet. So you can see here, this is very different to what Red Bull are doing. You've got the bit over the top uh, here, uh, whereas the Red Bull really just had that bottom sort of beak type lip. And you can see that the undercut is much smaller here, uh, which allows you to have a much larger side area to the car. Now, when we have a look at the car in side view here, you can see exactly what's going on. So if we have a look at that undercut first, you can see the airflow has got a much smaller area and it's hitting the front edge of the floor much further forwards. This means that that front end downforce is focused much further forwards along the axle line, which means you get much more front downforce from this setup. Then you have this big flat area and then just a small undercut here. I can just highlight it. You can see you've got the ridge of the side pods that goes in to that shape here. And it's this little area here that is allowing some of the airflow to go towards the diffuser to give you that rear end downforce. But this is maybe slightly more front end biased than some of the other cars. And then the other big trick with the Ferrari is the bathtubs, as people like to call them, these big dips. And this is the first time we really see these louvers which have been allowed within the regulations. And what these are doing are letting all the hot air out of the radiators and pass basically back along in this big curve and pass out through the rear wing of the car. So when you summarize the Ferrari, you can see it's a very low drag setup. It's protecting the front tire wake and the rear tires and that balance of downforce front to rear is quite balanced. It's much more towards the front of the Red Bull, but as we'll see, very different to the other ones. Then we come to the Mercedes, which is a very different concept completely, apart from perhaps the William, which in some respects is similar. Now, a lot of people have called this the zero side pod. Um, I don't agree. Uh, you can actually see that there is a side pod here, but it's been kept absolutely to the minimum. Whereas Red Bull and Ferrari had a big front inlet and a big side area to the side pod, you can see that Mercedes have a very small side pod and then they've moved the inlet to be very narrow and tall at the side here. But they've also done something else which is very clever. They've separated that side impact structure here into its own little separate wing. And what this means is inside here is that crash tube that we saw earlier. But this actually works with the front tire to push the front tire wake away. So the edge of this winglet here will create a vortex which pushes that airflow away and help keeps the airflow managed further back down along the car. So yeah, you can see, and you can see there's very little surface area at the back here. Now, if we have a look at the side of the Mercedes and have a look at a bit more detail, you can see that this whole zero pod concept doesn't really stand up in terms of uh, that title. What you have is this bulge here, and this bulge here basically is empty bodywork. There's nothing inside it. It's not housing radiators or electronics or anything. It's purely aerodynamic. And what this is doing is it's grabbing this airflow that's coming around the front, pushing the airflow out just as we saw on the Rebel and the Ferrari working with the underfloor. And this is helping create some front end downforce uh, simply by pushing the airflow out and loading the edge of the floor. Then the airflow that then comes down over the sloping side pods can go straight out towards the diffuser to give you that balanced downforce. So you can see in summary that Mercedes again have got that balanced front to rear downforce but they are trading uh, some drag by not really having the bodywork managing the front tire wake and particularly the rear tire wake as well, which will slow them on the straights, but will give them more downforce overall. So that's the balance that they've had to find with their car. And then we can have a look at something that is completely different again from these other concepts, which is the Alfa Romeo. 
This is in some respects, and this is the reason I chose this car in particular, very similar to the Aston Martin. And this goes completely differently. So what you can see here now is the side pod is a different shape. It's much longer. But what you can see is that the side pod has a cross section which has this big undercut passing underneath the car. And this makes it very different from the other ones. If we have a look at it a bit closer now in this clip, we can actually try to understand what's going on. First of all, the radiators are packaged quite differently. So the radiators are packaged like this. So you can see that there is a gap between the radiator and the floor. And it's this repackaged almost horizontal radiator that allows the airflow to pass under. The other reason they're able to do this is because of these cooling louvers. Now they didn't have these last year, but having the radiation in that position, it's very hard to get the airflow out. Having airflow be able to come directly out through these louvers means that you can have this radiator in a slightly unusual position. What this then allows Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin to do is to direct this airflow that would normally come out sideways, as we've seen on the other car, to pass directly under the car all the way out, completely uninhibited to the diffuser. So you can see that this setup really is loading the diffuser much more and doing almost nothing at the floor edge here. So you can see that there is just a small airflow here and then whatever is working underneath the floor to load the floor edge. Now what you end up with here is a much lower drag setup, much rear focused, but it does mean that you may struggle to get enough downforce on the front axle to get the car to work. So you can see it's quite different. Now it's working for Alfa Romeo. We look at Aston Martin, have a number of other problems with the car. You can see that they're struggling. So it isn't the side pod concept that they're having problems with it, it's issues everywhere else. And really with side pods, it's all about how you compromise all these different shapes and functions in order to get the car working. What will be interesting is when we come to 2023, teams will have the chance to choose what has been the best part of their car, what has been the best side pod solution, and we'll see how that changes. So this will be a slow moving story over the next few years in Formula One.